to leave that in. We have to leave that in for YouTube. No, no, I refuse to leave that in for YouTube. Oh, God. The most awkward of opening technical no. malfunctions, just everyone sitting there going, click, click. 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 <laughs> Even Chelsea are muted clapping with, like, Maya in the background <laughs> jumping around. Then there's me just fiddling on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, how long? When, when did we start going live? Was it after I had muted myself? Oh uh, yeah, we were. Okay. We were so we're just for, sitting there like, Yeah, we were, ah. we were we were there for about a minute. <laughs> oh, <God. sighs> Anyways, I guess that's a fucking cold open. You want me to do the the clipboard? No, do the thing. Oh, it was dude. rigid. Dude. <sighs> <Okay>. <sighs> It's easy to let subjective experience warp life lessons. I, I guess this opener has been a life lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Cruelty and ghoulish intent rightfully quelled and called out. The narcissist can see it only as censorship, blind to their own impact and agency. In a world of ghouls, the living was form enclaves, barricaded from assault and dressed in wool to muffle the heartbeat. Muffle it lest the thumping of life anger the ghouls, and they rend you like voracious packs. When the ghouls are outnumbered, they are forced to retreat. The living work rites and alchemies trying to stir life in the undead. The ghoul does not want life. It wants to devour. Hungry, it throws tantrums in its lair. The living want to control us. They want to oppress us. They want to make us live in fear. Denied the non-right to destroy the living and remain in undead horror, the ghouls sneak into the cities at night. They ravage and call it revenge. Welcome to Bloodwine. We are going to pick things off more or less where we ended the last stream. Uh, just a little bit ago, you were hired by some guy called Senator Franklin. There is a weirdly awkward handshake. And it's about noon, you just got back to the boat, you've got no other jobs, you just got hired by the rookery and you've been handed your port pass. You're kind of in the lurch. Was that a week ago? It feels like it was longer than that. Gosh. Did we miss an episode? No. I don't no. think so. It was last week. It feels like it's been so long since then. I the am like a lockdown in stages. Blood wine feels like an eternity every time. Every time. I'm, at, I'm genuinely at the point of the pandemic where time has become meaningless. Oh yeah, one hundred percent meaningless. Like for me, it still feels like May. <laughs> I know we took a break between one previous episode, and the break yeah. happened, and now we're streaming. Yes, and yeah. those are facts. And that's about as good as I am at time. Like I genuinely, day to day, my schedule, I'm great. I'm waking up on time. I'm getting things done. I'm quite efficient. It's just. It feels it's like you're, you're doing the day, you know, yeah. like you do the yeah. day and then you do the day again and then you do the day again. Mm -hmm. you know? the, and it's not even in like a meaningless drone thing. It's just like the droning itself, the thing that you think would wear you down has become secondary. You're experiencing that in almost its own track of like day in, day out, and then separately you're processing life at a different speed. Yeah. Like, it's been months, we're staying inside, like, we're, we're still staying inside as much as possible, even though most people have to still go outside at some point to do some kind of thing. Like, if you've been forced out of lockdown, it's still tense. If you're still able to lock down, lots of people are clinging to it as long as possible. It's just like... Yeah, I don't know. But on Fridays, we drink. On Fridays, we drink. And on, and on Wednesdays, we drink. And on Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, well, on Wednesdays, we drink, too. Not because of alcoholism, just because... What's a weekend anyways, if you work on a weekend? Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's philosophical. Man. Man. I don't even know why I'm saying that. I've spent a lot of my life, like, not being able to have weekends off, like, working through weekends. But I'm saying this now, like, what does it matter if you're working weekends at the one time in years and years where I've actually had weekends off? <laughs> it doesn't feel real. 
I mean, I'm back at school now, so I don't have weekends off. Well, like, I'm trying to plan my schedule, like, do things during the week so that I do have the weekends off, but Mm -hmm. that's not going to stay for for forever. Because you were on an internship for a while, so you had the allure of 9 to 5, the knowledge of there's actually partitioned free time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's snatched away. 5 o'clock hits and... (laughs) You don't have to do work anymore. <laughs> and then you're done, and you can go home and yeah. laugh at all the people who are in school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my favorite part of right now, being able to laugh at people who are still in school. <laughs> like me. Exactly. Although I was in school, and you would come home, and instead of laughing at me, you'd be like, why are you still in your pajamas? Didn't you have class today? <laughs> Please tell me that something that play Overwatch all day. Yeah. And I'll be like, well, I ate a hot dog. Um, so let's keep life for a little bit. Yeah, I did roll over at one point. <laughs> yeah, well, I had, I had to get out of bed to come down here. Got out of bed, and I wasn't wearing these pajama pants when I was sleeping. So, like, put on, some put on, pants. yeah, pick them right up off the floor. There's a duality to it. Like you're working until 11 p.m., but you're also sleeping in until 2 p.m. You know, like. Yeah. You've got a bunch of pizza boxes you haven't cleared out, and you've just been playing Smash Bros. for a week straight. But then also you'll just disappear and then come out and be like, I haven't showered in weeks, but I think I got a B plus, and then disappear again. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I, I've i been getting into this routine of, like, waking up at 9.30 and then staying in bed until 10.30. And, mm-hmm. like, and then, I, and then I don't start doing anything until, like, 11.30-ish. Yeah. And then I do schoolwork until five ish. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So goddamn okay. jealous. <laughs> I know. That was so my I'm life right during now. vacation. I just got off of vacation and that was my life during vacation and I loved it. Now you're waking up at eight o'clock sharp. Yeah. Well, not really. <laughs> eight thirty. Kind yeah, of sharp. I was gonna say eight thirty two roll out of bed for an eight thirty work. <laughs> The thing is, you spend so much time just on standby, just being present in case work happens. Yeah. Mm. Like, there's not actually that much work in a day. But, like, a lot of it is just someone has to be at attention for when the fucking, I don't know, when something the thing comes through the tube. Yeah. The internet, the series of tubes. The tubes. Mm -hmm. I know the tubes. Man. So you guys are in White Abbey. It's noon, and you're uh, you're by the ship. Man, thank God. I was getting sad. Um, <laughs> thank God. Thank God. I don't actually live in, in real life. Yeah. In a tube. So, what? <laughs> <laughs> so are we meeting up with this senator guy, or do you literally just want us to watch over him to shake hands? It was just for that meeting. Okay. Shit. What are we doing again? What? Good question. Right? Like, we finished off with Sun and the Senator doing a doing a handshake. Or it's the Lord doing a handshake. Right, Will? Yeah. The Lord. Yeah. Uh, so, have you guys ever been in that really weird few days after you've been hired, but it hasn't been really effectively communicated to you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, I had a job at one point where there was, like, a week where I genuinely wasn't sure. And in hindsight, I was an idiot. I was sitting there in orientation going, I don't know. And then I just saw money in my bank account and went, oh, yeah, I guess I work here. (laughs) You're kind of in that lull where you, you pass the interview and then the guy left. And then you had that weird job now and the guy left. And you're in White Abbey. And, like, you definitely shouldn't leave now. That would be an objectively bad decision. But you have no idea what you're waiting for. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do some crafting, which means I need to get some dice. Ho ho. I was going to say, I probably, I probably did some performances. Set up my shop as a fortune teller. <laughs> Set up the old bracket in White Abbey. I know the best spots in White Abbey. <laughs> Tell me about the best spots in White Abbey. Well, 
it's not quite at the market square it's slightly off the market square and you don't want to go you don't want to go to you know sort of the low income areas because they just don't have the money for it mm -hmm. you, you have to find that sweet spot between the low income and the market where they have some disposable income but are also incredibly gullible and it just so happens to be right outside of a herbalist shop <laughs> <laughs> where people are basically it i say herbalists in in the sense that it would be used today <laughs> yeah where they're essentially you know selling, crystals herbs apothecary yeah they're selling oregano and you know <laughs> mm -hmm. they're oh, saying right, it's right. a cure-all <laughs> it's it's, in your bed at night yeah exactly it, it's stuff like that where it they're not doctors they have no medical training they're they're just peddling wares and they're really successful at it surprisingly mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's that's where i tell people's fortune hmm. and jane probably trying to find the sketchy bunch no, where could I get like a good job in this town? You know what I mean? Like a side good job, a good job on the side. A something to make money kind of thing. Something to make a little extra money, you know? All right. So you guys are all heading out in different directions and you have four crew members. Somebody's got to stay with the ship. Uh, specifically, Sun is going to be in the belly of the ship, but someone's going to have to stay above. What are you would, asking of the crew members? Um, I wouldn't even be willing. Like, if everybody else has something else that they want to be doing, I would be willing to stay by the ship for a bit. I don't know. But what is, what is, does anybody else have business in like, the city? I, I, I don't really feel the pull, so I would probably do the same. I would say we probably trade off at some point. Like, asking of the crew i imagine rutger and bilgy mm -hmm. don't spend too much time outside so i'll say that your initial goal of looking for work is really compatible uh just you uh sorry jane's son and ken and yay are staying on the ship the other two below decks doing crafting work uh you're staying just at the edge of the boat like you know leaning on a crate with a notebook nearby because people who are looking for a boat to do a thing go, oh, hey, uh, I have a weird question, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and meanwhile, everyone else has gone off with you uh, with Crowquill towards the market square. The... Like, there's a thrift store, but also a jewelry store kind of market square. That sounds accurate. So, where do we want to focus first? Who's who's scene are we going for first? Um, Jane, Crowwells. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> all right. So everybody all piles on off. Uh, this is convenient because you just kind of stay where the thumping is, and people will give you a tap. You don't really need to think about where you're walking. You're heading off. You've given them sort of an indication of where the good spots are in town. And you're not too far. It's reasonably close to the docks. It's reasonably close to everything. It's so convenient right here oh. near the strip mall. And you hear some of them heading off uh, into the market square itself. You're sort of just off, like you're on the main road, but you're like a half block away where someone would feel comfortable, like genuinely stopping in the middle of the road to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody you want to stay with you? Bill G is going to be stuck in dog form. Rooker is going to be stuck in uh, human form. Mm. I think you also have Tiana with you. No, the Gambit's best run alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would say that the Gambit is probably best run alone. All right. You, you hear Tiana leave, uh, sort of grumbling. You hear something about a tavern, uh, but sort of distantly through the hum of other people. Uh, Rooker and Bilgy sort of shrug and go, 
like, okay, go for a walk. And they wander off, not into the market square, but sort of down a side road. All I'm, almost all as I'm if they have a destination in mind. To be the blind seeress, you know, the blind seer, the mystical person, it really helps not to have a dude going like this, standing right next to you, being like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. All right. So you sit yourself down and get nice and comfortable. It takes you a little while. Uh, this is a spot that you've been in this town before. Uh, bef so before setting up, you quickly come in, you make some introductions, just, hey, how's it going? How's the business? Oh, you saw that crate? Oh, sorry, we don't, I, we lost that contact, so we don't have access to that. No, I'll let you know if we have something. Okay, bye. And you head back outside, put some crates down, you go behind the alley. You've been around this building a few times, so you don't really need to think about it. You just walk, you pick up like, a few boards, make a little table, and then you just sit, you put out the materials that are in your bag, and you wait. Because all it takes is the first person to bite out of curiosity, and then everyone lines up behind the other person a little ways away. You can hear them muttering. You, they're just too far away that you can hear where they are. Uh, but for now, you're waiting. We'll head back to the ship. Uh, Hello, Dex. How are things going with your crafting? Uh, pretty good, actually. I got a 19 as my craft roll. I'm almost done. Uh, what good ones what percentage there. done are you? Exactly 80%. Okay, so at this point, you've got all of the actual, like, filing done. You sit there and finally set aside the last of the slugs and they're not done, but you have the first side because now you're just checking them over before you start assembling them. You're sort of midway through filing down, and right as you finish with the like the heavy duty files you use to make the sort of plus shaped divots in the front of your slugs that you like for the impact ones, you pass the order over to Cannonier, and he starts working on filing down a few of the gears for the mechanics in uh, the apparatus. He hands you over some sandpaper from the other side, and you start to like clean up. He started chatting and he goes, so, working on anything specific? Oh, uh, not really, just making some, uh, some high impact slugs, you know, trying to, trying to get a better fit of cash out of, uh, liquid assets. Oh, yeah? Reckon you're gonna sell them? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, these, these things sell pretty good, uh, I mean, I mean, that's... That's kind of how we've been, been funding this whole uh, I mean, digester at the uh, the apparatus. You know what I mean? And he goes, hey, I mean, come on. They produce something sometimes. He leans past you. He grabs a set of glasses with one lens busted out. The other one's got something. He, it's the usual steampunk bullshit, like a lens and then another one and another one. And he starts working on a really tiny gear, and you see him slotting it into a little thing. He goes, I mean... If we can miniaturize these things, I'm telling you, we sell them by the pound and the pound, the apparatus. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, it's it's definitely innovative. I'm, I'm real excited. I'm just... I kind of peer over and... Just, I, I don't know how, uh... How reasonable that is, I mean... So you look over and you see that he's putting a gear, like threading it onto a pre-slotted like axle that's got some slots to make sure it catches properly and it's almost like a magic eye you look in and even though everything's quiet the moment that he clicks it in to make sure it's catching properly it's like the gears start ticking and you look closer and closer and there's a gear within the gear and he kind of gives you a push for a moment and you snap out of it he's working with some fuckery here <laughs> <laughs> Um, goes above my head, whatever you're doing. Look, I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure this business stays in the, uh, stays in the black, so the, so the... How do you make the, the impact slug thing anyways? What makes it, uh, impactful? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's just how it applies the force, right? I mean, you can, you can try and pierce through things, but if they got thick armor on, that's, you know, that's what the armor's there for. If you can hit someone with a hammer, it'll... You know, knock the brains around, and if you can hit him with a hammer from real far away, well, Bob's your uncle. 
Yeah, I guess I guess Bob is my uncle. And Kenny just stands over, and you see him put something in the box, and then go off into the apparatus to tinker with something. Outside, uh, so Jane, you're sitting down, and there's people coming and going. Uh, you, you've got a number of people coming. It's actually like every five to ten minutes. You know, someone will come up and ask you a question. But a lot of these jobs, you just oh, we'll let you know, or, oh, that's not really what we do, and you shrug them off, you know, like, oh, a family and kids going across the border? Not with smugglers, you're not. Sorry, you might want another uh, ship, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. You spend a few minutes, um, like, listening to people, getting a few gigs. Uh, you know what most people on the ship kind of want to do, but what's your bias towards? Um, easier jobs, jobs that don't require so much, um, interaction. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, if I can take something from point A to point B, that's probably ideal. If it's, if the object is smaller or, like, easier to hide, also ideal. That sort of thing. So... There's a couple of people from far away. You can see they have the sort of gait and shamble of people who are suffering from something or other. You're not worried that they're contagious or anything. They come close and just sort of... They hesitate a little way before they get to the boat, and then they come close and ask you if you're going to New Farm Market. Do I know where we're going? We, we, don't, know? we don't have... We have nothing. <laughs> No destination. I tell them that uh, we're not really, we're waiting on a, waiting on some information. We don't actually know where we're going for it yet. Why? What's, what, what you looking for? Uh, roll your smuggler skill. I need some dice. And is it a craft or a mental thing? It's a craft. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh. 20. Okay, so you're sitting there, like, smashing toy trains together, going, like, new far market, these people look sick, I don't, and, like, they're obviously sitting there trying to communicate something, and they say one word that just clicks that you've heard before, and they go, yeah, just, you know, the, um, since they cl close the borders, and then you click, and you go, ooh, there's a package you could pick up in New Farm Market that they're, like, euphemizing about. And it's like that one signal you get, and then everything's illuminated, and you start to pick up on the lingo. These people, you get a bit of communication, like, yeah, you know, like, we've been, you know, suffering a little while since that happened. Yeah, uh, you know, over the border, there's an apothecary, but if you could get, it's all about the fact that it's illegal to bring over the port. And... You pick up that these guys basically want you to pick up uh, a couple crates of medication from over a New Farm Market. Okay. How far away is New Farm Market? Can I see the map? Can we bring up the map real quick? <laughs> yes, you can. Ooh. Now no longer it. completely screwed up. <laughs> it's yeah. So, it's so beast of here, right? It's equivalent, yeah, it's equivalent exchange. We we made the maps work and we made the intro mess up, I guess. Yeah, it's it's super equivalent on that one. Uh, so was New Far Market that little island there, Will? Uh, no, it's, if you go back to where White Abbey was and then you go like just one square beneath at the very top, there's kind of a tiny bay and there's a village opposite. So one square beneath at the very top. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a little bay. <laughs> yeah. You can sort of see the little bay. Right here. That's the bay? Okay, or so that's not far about at all. This? Oh, are you talking about this bay, Will? A little low, the southern bay. Yep. Uh, the, there's basically a point that's formed between the two maps in a really awkward position. Right. So it's like a C formation. Like it's it's genuinely like if you squint, you can see the city. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Sarah Palin here. You can see New Farm Market from New. 
your house in White Abbey. Okay. That doesn't seem too bad. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be down to do that. I could do that for them. All right, so you've done this a little while. You give them a non-committal response, but internally you go, okay, that's one on the slate. Yeah. It, and a little while passes. You get another person asking. Uh, you have no idea who this person's name is. You go from so many ports that it feels ubiquitous, but this person obviously remembers you more than you remember them. You see an elf born sort of like... One of those weird paradoxical things where, like, they're trying to look scruffy on purpose, but also is not scruffy on purpose, so it's just double scruffy. Yeah. It kind of shambles over to you and goes, hey, hey, um, you know that, that guy over in Red Wine, uh, I hear, you know, he's got something you could pick up. Okay. You wouldn't happen to be going that way, would you? I might be. I'm not. We're not quite sure where we're heading quite yet. Okay. Well, well, well you, you know, think about it. Think about it. I'll think about it. Do you know where to find me? Where can I find you? Uh, it's like it's that place off Ingleside Street, but like off off Ingleside Street. Okay. Sure. Cool. 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 I'll see you around. And the guy shambles off. All right. Another one down. Another one down. We need to uh, figure out where we're actually going. Yeah. We need to get some sort of uh, notification from the rookery. Yeah. So, Crow Quill, you're just outside the budget discount market square TM. Uh, and you're, you know, like you're passing off readings. There's a few people going like... Well, I have this boyfriend. Well, I, I mean, it's not... I don't even know if he's a boyfriend. I mean, maybe. And you're a good cold reader. You get the impression like, okay, this is someone who's actually just generally insecure and wants a reassurance more than a prediction. Okay, this person actually wants a bit of magic. You do a bit of ritual magic to keep them easy. One person is just kind of seeing through the facade and goes, hey, yo, I'm looking for a ward. And you... You don't do your usual work, but you know, you cast one and someone else casts one. And then things get slow for a little bit. And then there's someone who walks up to you with a familiar voice. You're not sure from where, but you hear a uh, fortune teller, hmm? Yes, I tell everything that's going to happen. Just the my usual bit of the all-seeing eye despite not seeing. <laughs> you hear that there's a group of people, all of them being quiet. The same, like, it's one of those things where it's in the dynamic of how things are moving back and forth. There's a muffling over towards the road, and you can hear the edges where the group stops. There's some shuffling, some clothes moving. There must be, you can't count, but more than three, less than ten, really vague. Whoever it is in front goes, well then, tell me about your your craft. Hmm? Well, you see, it's not a craft. It's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my god. I've That's tapped into the magics of the universe. <laughs> roll understand. Oh, fuck. I haven't up my understand yet. Uh, that's all right. This isn't the important one. I'm gonna get you to roll another one after this. It's the big one. Uh, so that's a eight. Eight. Okay. Nice. I'm gonna remember the eight. What do you usually do when you're like doing fortune telling for people and selling yourself? Um, it's it's pretty much just an entire performance that I do. Like it's 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 all a massive fucking facade. I don't believe a word of what I'm saying, but it's just one of those things of common things that people worry about. You know, um, saying different phrases that typically catch people off guard. Um, so like deception would be more like 
bullshitting your way through what you figure someone's blind spot is. Perform would be drumming up the attention in the theatrics, and I would say understand is trying to narrow your way down. It's is I mostly rely on theatrics. Um, okay, want to give me a perform? Yeah. I would say that my normal act, if like the guy before who's just like, just give me a ward, I was mm -hmm. just like, okay, yeah, sure, here. <laughs> but mm -hmm. for someone who's like a skeptic that I really want to make a believer, I'll even use Omen Watcher on mm -hmm. for like a specific thing. If I can narrow in what they want, I can, I'll Omen Watcher and give them an actual prediction. Mm -hmm. um, so that was actually <laughs> the best role I could get. I got two sixes. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a 15. 15. So you're like, it's a gift. And you, you hear a brief hesitation as he goes, a gift. You, you've been to different ports. You know that people, like, there's a nuance to the way that people have really subtle bigotries about certain things. Something about what he says makes you think he's worried about you being a dark trust a dark touch and is more fearful than curious. So instead of going a gift, you go more like a gift yes. implying that it's not, it's not that it's not that you seem to reassure him. There's definitely a little bit of unease. There's something underneath the surface, but you can't discern it. You're going to have to observe a little further. So very well. Uh, so how does this work? Do I... Do you just say something? Do I tell you what I'm worried about? Well, telling me what you're worried about certainly does help narrow things down. The magics are all around. They're tough to interpret sometimes. <laughs> so having something to focus on, to hone in on, that's very helpful. Especially in a crowd like this, where there's... So many issues. <laughs> All right, well, want to give me another understand? I also would like to make it very clear that when I'm doing this performance, I make it very clear that I'm blind. <laughs> yeah. Like, like one of those things where even though you can clearly hear where the speaker is near you and like you're not capital B blind, like if you don't have the cloth on, you can just see a really unhelpful amount of color and light. Yeah. Like I make but it like you've got the you've got the wraps, you're like tapping on the table going, yes. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> like you you're playing off of the ignorance. You're trying to at least get a little bit of cash off of people's mm -hmm. inability to empathize. Uh that's a solid six. <laughs> All right. So you you accidentally thump the table a bit too loud and distract yourself, so you don't hear the tone super clearly, but there's a hesitation, and then he goes, I'm worried about people infiltrating my homeland. I've never been afraid before. Always steeled in front of the adversary, but I'm still worried. <laughs> Gabe seems to have several concerns. <laughs> 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 Ooh, go on, go on, no, keep, no, keep, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, you good? You good, bud? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's just this man is going in my frail white, frail white redditor uh, <laughs> operation. Um, yeah. So, hmm. Hmm. For that, Croquil is going to just sort of take a moment to pause, like genuinely humming up the theatrics even. Like she's mm -hmm. thinking how to respond, but she's sort of like pretending to listen to the air a little bit. Um, like fixated in a... Like, you're used to specifically 15 degrees up and 30 to the left. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go on the table, you go... Ah, yes. 
Yes, yes. And it's then you go 30, 15, yes. 15, 30, yes. <laughs> it's good to be worried about one's home. Yes, yes. <laughs> Invaders are a thing. They can happen at any time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's your reading? Are you going to roll for something? Do you have something out of your pocket? At this, I'm not really getting much. And the way he phrases that concerns me, considering our recent interaction with the crows. Mm -hmm. So I am actually going to give a sort of like calming don't worry type of uh reading and it's mm -hmm. just like um sometimes you know sometimes you worry about invaders however sometimes there are positives to people and to allowing people into your home <laughs> mm -hmm. stuff like that it's very fortune cookie in, in its so you so you say things that contradict contradict each other, but you sandwich them in a sort of tessellated way where you they aren't next to each other. It's sort of like it is righteous to want to defend one's home. Fear can overtake oneself, however. <laughs> one's home is full of important people, but wouldn't a big home be better? And yet the shadows grow, but they can seem over large when not stared at directly. Caution advised. <laughs> yeah, basically. Basically. Nice. He kind of nods and goes, thank you. And you can hear definitely on the larger side of your guess, the crowd heading off. You just take a moment to breathe, and there's a moment of emptiness, almost like people are afraid to step in the air that was just occupied, but whatever just happened attracted a good number of people. Uh, whatever your dominant skill is for this reading, want to give it a roll? What do you With mean? plus five. What do you mean by dominant uh, skill? Uh, like, not reading to reading, but like, if you were to aggregate like the 50 times you tried to give someone a fortune telling, what skill do you use? I, I would say it would probably mostly be, hmm, probably mostly be performance. I would say All there's right. like, there's ritual mixed in with that because I can easily do scries and, okay. you know, do stuff like that. But it's, it's mostly just me performing without having to do ritual. All right. Want to give me a roll? Wow. I'm rolling well tonight. <laughs> I got another <laughs> set of sixes. So oh wow! That's nice. another uh, fifteen for fifteen for me. All right. So with the extra plus five because of all the attention you've gathered, you you start to hear the hubbub. You think that there's some people giving you the eye. You may have overstayed your welcome. So you start to take things down. You count things out. It's in change, so you've got, oh, that's blah, blah, blah. And you've ended up putting together about two silver in profit in the two hours that you were able to stay here before getting driven away. Cool. Uh, so in the ship, uh, do you want to give me another roll game? Sure, like a crafting roll? Yep. All right. Uh, oh, did Mama get a new pair of shoes or not? Uh, maybe she did. I'm not sure. Hmm. Let's maybe see. just one shoe? Maybe maybe just a single shoe. Let's see, that is... 20% off coupon? Uh, exactly. Uh, that's 26. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so, nope, that's finished it. Putting the finishing touches on it. All right. So you get the last little bit of... Uh sanding, you polish them off, you give them the puff, you know, just to blow them, and then you get a little mini puffer to get them at the right angle, and then foof, foof, you dry them. And then after that, this is the bit you've done a thousand times. You have the shells, you measure the powder, you press them, you keep them level, you seal them, and you've got this, these ones all basically set in like a little ammo packet ready to go. And you're good to head above decks. 
And you oh, see, I as you're heading above decks, keeping an eye on things, you see Jane looking out, and both of you identify, firstly, coming off of a side alley, should be here any minute now, you see Crow Quill and the others, uh, like, returning to the ship. At the far end of the street, there's a few rookers coming. We'll be here in a few minutes. I'm going to take a piss. Cool. Well, all right, then. Finally get those rookers. Okay, boys, was that blue? Do you think that was blue in the gang? Mm. I was getting blue vibes. Maybe. I mean, the gang vibes. Maybe. I'm I... also going to take a piss. It seems like piss central over here. You can hold down the fort. Jeez. Man, hold down the fort. Well, Chelsea, hold down the fort. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah! <laughs> Can you imagine it was just like, Chelsea, you run the stream now. Go! <laughs> hey, guys. Like and subscribe. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can do that. I'm drinking White Claw. <laughs> so because because you're drinking White Claw, that, that gives you the ability to become the, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm going to go in. Oh, my God. Welcome back to my life. <laughs> so this is this has now become a uh, studio vlog. Yeah, just, Chelsea, Chelsea's vlog. Nice. <laughs> but it's just one camera position. It's one camera position all the time. It doesn't change whatsoever. No cuts. You just say yeah. what's on your mind, and after like five minutes, you go, "Well, thank you guys. Like and well, subscribe." Like very The Martian style, like his daily daily um, recordings or whatever, you know? Before you like go, inspired. I'd just like to give a very special shout out to Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> did I did I leave for a thinly veiled excuse to try and plot out the rest of session and we got a sponsorship in the meanwhile? What the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those Raid Shadow Legends sponsors just just come up so quick. Oh man. Do they ever? <laughs> yeah, we didn't do any plotting. <laughs> no, no plotting. No. Okay. Chelsea is assuming uh, that that's blue that just came by. Oh yeah, I, that's blue in the game. I have, I have vibes. That's blue in the corner, losing his religion? Yeah. <laughs> so, I will actually just take this moment to say to the GMs out there, Genuine tactic. If you ever are like midway through running a session and kind of feel like you need to take a piss, use that moment. It's the perfect moment to like sit there, stare at the wall, and go, "Okay, what the fuck am I doing with the rest of my hour? Mm -hmm. yeah, what are my plot threads?" The trouble with that is, is when you keep doing it every half hour, <laughs> people start to get yeah. concerned for your health. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. You've been drinking a lot, but you've also been going to the bathroom a whole lot. Just yep. You you sort of quietly concerned in a way where you don't want someone to know you're creeping. You get close to the bathroom and you quietly just hear, oh, "Fuck, fuck, 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 fuck." Do you even have the stats? <laughs> <laughs> How many dragons should I throw at them? Oh, I thought that joke was like, "Do I even have the stats for this massive turd I'm about to birth?" What's my constitution? Oh god! I'm about to find out! <laughs> oh no. So, Ultra. so you've killed a little bit of time. Uh, Crowquill, you took a bit of time to get back with everyone else. Uh, and now everyone's here sort of right at the... Right sort of like, some people are on the ship, some people are at the bottom of the ship, but everybody in the crew is here. And a few of these workers come up. One of them... You have no idea if it's the, someone you've been speaking to before or not, but you feel a familiarity. One of the figures comes up and goes, Right, so as you've been accepted, uh, we'd like to discuss your... Well, uh, normally this would just be a brief sort of meeting, you come to the general office, but we figured this was more of an orientation. Would you like the short version or the long version? Frankly, you seem capable, so I feel like we don't need to hold your hand at this point. Uh, probably the short version, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm off the thoroughness, but, uh... Right. So, every major city has a general office. These generally are only at port cities. We don't need them inland, because inland we're able to get bird cover. Uh, from there, we generally, uh, week to week or month to month, 
frankly, we have enough ships that we have a bit more flexibility for people who are more wandering, people who are more homebodies. We'd want you to spend a bit of time with specific deadlines, picking up crates and dropping them off within a certain delivery radius. Mm -hmm. So in marketing terms, is there a part of the world you'd like to explore? I mean, uh, I'm not an old boat uh, of you, but I'd like to go somewhere a little less uh, racist. <laughs> If I'm being frank, I mean, uh, somewhere a little less racist, I repeat. <laughs> right. Um, well, if you want to get work between here and there, we could probably get you on a shipment, uh, maybe southward or northward or over the sea. Uh, if you wanted to go all the way north towards Venkrum, you'd be in the borderlands, or you could go all the way around the coast towards East Landing, but we prefer new hires to stay at least somewhat close to their location of hire for at least a month or so. East. Mm -hmm. I want to go east. Uh, it sounds like we're going east. All right. Right. And the Rooker pulls out a map and goes, okay, uh, so... And there's like a grumbling, the sort of thing where someone's clearly talking to themselves in a way where they don't expect you to be listening. There's some pointing at nothing. Uh, do you want to pull up the map and take a look at our options here? I am glad I fixed the map then. All right. <laughs> what do you know? First train going, that? we don't need this. Oh, why did they get smaller? Oh, beans. Got smaller because I fixed it. It turns out everything wasn't scaling correctly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, turns out we have uh, surprise more content. Yeah. <gasps> turns out all of the travel that we've been doing has been missing like two squares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that explains why we're moving so dang quick. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, kind of noticed that. Like we we move really fast. Yeah. So like to put it into perspective, there's you know White Abbey. We were up here in Westwatch yep. and in that bay. And we just said it was kind of sort of like, you know, off to the here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we weren't wrong. Just It was sort of back. off to the here a little bit. Sure. <laughs> just um, a little bit we further okay. south. <laughs> We weren't inaccurate, we were just very imprecise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys are aware that if you want to avoid, like, the more racist crowd, then White Abbey and West Watch are both pretty bad. Uh, even though it's part of West March, Red Wine Keep is a really progressive place. Um, otherwise, if you go northward in the mainland towards, like, Craghold Land, where you've got, like, Cragholm and places like that, there, things are still really conservative, but it's not as... It doesn't have the sharpness of teeth that it does here. Mm. If you go all the way towards like Delta and stuff like that, things are okay. And if you go across the sea towards the Freedlands, there it's a bit of a bureaucratic nightmare, but you're able to get by. That being said, it's a bureaucratic it's a bureaucratic nightmare if you don't have a port pass, which you now do. Nice. Ooh. Well, bureaucrats or not, I bet they would have a uh, particular demand for our. Uh side services. Plus, even if we can't get that dang apparatus down small enough, I bet you a tour could carry it in a battle. So, if you guys are going to be sort of delivering around the Freedlands, the places that they would want you to go is either sort of in the northern section where you're going, like, between the bay and the point near, um, I think it's Bloodcrag. If you go southward, you would be probably going between like Red Wine Keep, White Abbey, West Watch, and New and uh, Newtown. So there would be Blood Crag, mm -hmm. and then Newtown. Yeah, my map wants it. Newtown would be right there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that sounds sounds good to me. Um. Kind of going between the, the two uh, two continents. All right. 
So they have discussions about like what your terms of service are, breach of contract, really innocuous stuff. And you guys are honestly, you guys are used to a far more cutthroat market. So these are pretty liberal terms as far as you're concerned. Hmm. You, you get through the bulk of them. They're all pretty agreeable. Uh, you guys have a package that you're able to pick up basically at any time in the next in exactly one week, it has to be delivered to Newtown. You're able to pick it up from the uh, like the central rookery here in White Abbey. All right. Well, I thought we were going to head try and look for work out east, not west. Well, we have to make a way out west, right? Might as well, uh, might as well pick up and deliver a package on the way. <laughs> the rookers sort of just shrug you've agreed and you can change within the next week after you've delivered this once you get to the next general rookery so they kind of just leave you be uh, you can see that the senator from earlier senator franklin is a little ways down the street sort of eyeing you guys waiting until the right moment to walk up Ooh. Hmm. kind of a shy one ain't he I give him a big hearty wave. Oh, right, over here! It's a moment of obvious, like, oh, fuck. And then, uh, hi! <laughs> and Senator Franklin walks up. Oh, hi. Um, I'm sorry, I... And he's obviously feeling super exposed and goes, maybe we should go to a tavern or... Sure. Low Decks or... Uh, low Decks is, I mean, probably more going through comfortable for a uh, majority of the crew. Uh, okay, right, right. Right, right this way, right this way. Okay. Everyone kind of just clambers on and goes a little way further from the street, not even below decks, just to the far side of the deck where it's harder to hear. And Senator Franklin goes, right, I, I'm worried that there's something bad happening here. I don't even want to say something illegal, but something that purposefully is legal, but that isn't right. Something about that Lord Franklin isn't, er, not Lord Franklin, what was his name? Friedman? It's on the back of, it's on the back of a piece of paper. <laughs> Ferdinand. 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 Right. It's the Archduke. Archduke. Well, I can tell you, it's, uh, his handshakes pack a bunch, ish. Man, I have so many bullets. <laughs> Yeah, I just, tomorrow is, you know, tomorrow is Prosper's Day, and usually a lot of things are scheduled that day with the upper crust, even though it's supposed to be a day off, because it's, you know, it's all pobnobbing. I just, I know this isn't exactly ethical, but do you think you could tail him? The, I don't know how to explain a few years worth of debates and discourse, but I just, I'm worried. Is all oh, sure. enough to warrant this? I mean, we're all. I mean, Jane is very sneaky. Not really. Son, son's idea of about? sneaky. I think it's a little sneaky. Son's idea of sneaky though is just going. Well, hey there, I'm going to be following behind you for a little bit. <laughs> son, Hello. Son, son's idea of sneaky is well, don't look too close to me now. I'm just going to be here. Uh... Hello to my good man. Honestly, Sun is liable to just walk up to someone and be like, hey, listen, just make, make it easier for all of us. What do you want to do? What are you up to, man? Tell me about it. Uh, right, yeah, anyways, no. um, if anybody asks... Actually, actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Forget if anybody asks. Not if anybody asks. This is supposed to be the alibi, so let's just say this is the only thing we talked about. Genuinely, politically, how, how are things when you say as people working as, you know, boaters and general... Naval service people in the area around West March. Oh, uh, pretty bad, if I'm being honest. Uh, oh, West March. We were actually. They shot down a rookery ship. Yeah, Just boat got shot down. On our way here. Got I heard rat. rumors. I, I might have to get you to testify at some point for that, but oh, no. I won't compel you, and that either way, that would be months away. The docket is full of bullshit right now. Um, out of curiosity, are any of you citizens? 
<laughs> I think I am. Uh, yeah, Jane owns a house. Jane, so you raise your hand and Tiana raises her hand. I guess I should also raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, citizen. So I place I was a proper citizen of uh, sort of no longer exists fully. Um, Where were you living? In the, uh, oh, what was that place called? It's not Celestia, but it's the, uh, the demon one. So, between the citizens and non-citizens among you, have you found that the difference in your uh, residency, so to speak, has had an effect on your abilities to trade in the area, to engage in lawful business? I'll go over at Bill G. Bill G. Wait, um... Bill G, a rat folk who is in dog form to not be attacked by the guard on site, just kind of barks. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say, uh, citizenship. Yeah, no, it makes a difference. Things used to be better around here, eh? Things have really gone downhill, I'll tell you that much. Uh, last but not least, is there anything that you'd like to, uh, report to someone who has a place within the Senate, a certain amount of political power? We can talk one-on-one -on -one privately if you need to. Just I realize you're not my constituents. I'm an inland provincial district, but... Just the general racism, I think. It's kind of hard on those of us that aren't humans. Don't fit, fit the cookie-cutter outline. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was a, uh... The Rookery... I'll take it under advisement. Anyways, I, I should go before people get suspicious. Thank you for your time. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Franklin leaves. Before he leaves, he kind of halfway down the gangplank turns around and goes, oh, oh, right, right, right. Um, easy way to catch the guy. Uh, morning mass tomorrow. It's going to be really obvious. It's pageantry. It's going to be easy to get a hook on him. Bye. And he leaves again down the, down the gangplank and then awkwardly shuffles back to the middle of town. I give a slightly smaller wave goodbye. Okay. Cool. Well. What time is it now in the day? It's it's the kind of few hours you've had where genuinely you say that and everyone kind of bewildered looks from side to side and then kind of tries to measure from the sun. It's late in the day, maybe? You kind of ponder this. You get into another weird side topic for about five minutes and then the bells ring and you go, oh, yeah. It's... Like mid afternoon, late afternoon. Okay. Is anybody here good at social? Either Jane or Krokel? I plan on doing some social understand and perform, but What do you need? Hmm? Oh, I was I was just going into town. I was wondering if anyone here had a pre established good barter skill. Uh, um, no, nope. but barter isn't even on my list because I have the cool list that Will needs to update that doesn't have barter skill on here. <laughs> ah. So Kenny, he kind of nudges you and he goes, "Come on, your business partner. You're forgetting about your business partner. I can sell things. Come on." Well, all right then. We don't even need to go far. We just go to the base of the gangplank, uh, and you guys, you head down, and he, you know, you quickly set up a table. He's got a bunch of crates, and he goes, Do you have the, you know, like the second generation crate? We don't need to put anything in it, but, you know, the big red one that's got, like, explosive right on the front. <laughs> yeah, I'll go get it. So you head down. Like, the modern explosive crates are actually really innocuous because you don't want people to know where the things that blow up are right away. There's obvious designators when you try to inspect the crate contents, but otherwise it's just a box. But like these ones, they retire like five years ago, but you take it out almost like science fair style because it's a thing that looks boomy. It's just this big thing. There's nothing in it, but you nail it shut just to make sure. It's nice. It's red. It goes explosives. There's a big skull on it. You plonk it down, and that's what it takes for people to start looking. Uh, what are you trying to sell? I just have those uh, impact rounds. Um, I crafted them at a value of uh, one gold, six copper. 
All right. So how many are they by number? I believe 20 in a box. Each at one. Uh, one box is one gold, and there's oh. plenty in a box. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so you've got like a box and a few extra. Are you keeping the extras for yourself, or are you selling those as like individuals, oh. and then there's a case? Oh, I'm selling them. I feel like what it is at this point is I have been doing the work that funds the apparatus. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I, I'm not keeping any of these for myself. Actually, as soon as I build them, I hate them. Like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's a perfect... Like you've, like you've built a monument to how much better you could do? Exactly, exactly. As soon as these are done, I'm like, oh, God, I wish I hadn't filed the, the point in this way. I'm going to get a better chamfer on the next batch, and I'll just want them out of my sight. All right, so in a weird way, it works almost paradoxically where it's like people are almost allured by it going, wow, imagine what the good stuff is like. This stuff must be pretty good, too. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kenny tries to sell the apparatus. For the most part, it's this, you know, he has like a display model mounted on something, and it's a big clunking thing with steam. So it's an eye catcher, and he never makes money, but it gets people there so that they buy the other stuff at the stand, right? Or He's the showpiece. You're the, you're the seller. <laughs> And it's, it's the standard stuff, like you've got a few old ones, you, you actually managed to sell the last of your back stock, so if you want any actual merchant stuff to really make good coin, you'll have to go and buy some more. Uh, so you get the last of your bullet boxes, some slugs, and you manage to offload the singles bit by bit when people are going to buy them, going, oh yeah, I'll try an impact slug, and then someone buys the box, and you're sold out. Cool. Nice. <laughs> so by the time you sell, uh, it's pretty good business here. Uh, so like the, it's closer to dinner time. Uh, it's still a city, so there's still some trade to be made, some errands you could run here out in the country. This would be when things close, but it's a little more, a few more hours in the day. While the sales are happening, what are the rest of you doing? I'd say um, that Croquil is sort of. You vague. could um. Hmm? You could probably feed off the traffic and do some fortune telling right here off the pier. Nah, I don't like I don't like rushing it too much. If you start mm -hmm. if you start including yourself next to other people who are selling your wares, the mysterious atmosphere mm -hmm. is sort of gone, and it's especially mm -hmm. hard yeah. to concentrate with Sun being like, "Yeah, this is the best stuff in the business." Well, it's not really the best stuff. I mean, I could do better. I could do much better. You know what? Just fucking take it. <laughs> <laughs> especially like I imagine that Sun's the kind of person where it's like you pre-calculate that you're going to take a certain percent loss and then you set those aside as display bullets so that you're probably going to fire them off as you're showing people how the guns work. So it's like trying to fortune tell and then just getting periodic gunshots from a few feet yeah, away. Trying to be all like, ooh, mystical, bang. Ooh. It, doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So It also uh, doesn't help that Sun will occasionally... I feel like you have had a client doing a fortune telling and Sun goes, why do you give them bullshit when you can actually predict the future? <laughs> <gasps> Who needs vagaries when you can have certified accuracy with our impact slugs? <laughs> that has definitely happened at least once, and Crowquill refuses to have Sun involved with any of her schemes anymore. <laughs> it was an honest question. So I'm I'm going to say Crowquill is sort of training Warbles a little bit, trying to get him to like better understand the world around him, just sort of like just in general trying to get get warbles to understand things <laughs> like like half-assed hangout training yeah hangout training basically we were headed we're heading west right mm -hmm. um there was that that sketchy guy that came up to us that wanted to drop i uh, wanted us to drop something off in the westerly direction Right? I think uh, that was at Red Wine, which would be to our south and slightly west. Mm -hmm. The guy wanted you to pick something up from Red Wine. Mm. Someone else wanted you to pick something up from New Farm Market. Okay. Never mind then. Pick something up. 
Just rocking the time back. I guess we could go to the farm market. The crew kind of shrugs and looks at the rest of you and kind of... Bilgy speaks up. Presumably at this point, since you guys are being frank about your business, you've gone below decks. It's getting a little later. People are eating dinner. Rooker's, you know, like sizzling something up. Mm -hmm. Bilgy goes, hey. He's back in his rat folk form. He goes, I don't know. I think tailing someone can't be too complex. You don't need a whole fleet. Just need one or two to be doing the work. The rest of us could probably take care of the work and get a bit of extra coin along the way. Yeah, that is fair. Uh, if we're just going to be tailing this guy. Wait, for the rookery, they wanted us to drop something off for the rookery job, right? Well, they want us to pick something up and then sort no, of use like, their boat to move it and then drop it off, yeah. Okay. Tiana sort of like looks at it and goes, well, we got a week. And I mean, hold on, how many miles are we, not nautical, but uh, new metric miles from the, from here to, or was it Newtown? Oh, knock it off those new metric miles. Nobody uses them. There's an audible scoff, almost like an echo from Tiana, then Rooker, and then separately in the other room, obviously on a raw nerve, because you thought about it a bunch of times, Ken and Yi. And Ken and Yi says, New metric bullshit! And you hear him, like, audibly, in a huff, stand up, grab both of his crutches and, like, start clambering over. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay, calm, calm down a bit there, Ken and Yi. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have brought it up. Tiana's distracted and goes and leans behind something and like, behind a few crates, like, pulls out a bit of a chalkboard, takes a bit of chalk and starts doing math and goes, no, well, hold on, if we're... starts getting distracted. Anyway, all I'm saying is, I could probably tail the guy tomorrow. Because, I don't know, it might be a tomorrow job, I'm not sure how long that's going to take. And New Farm Market isn't very far away. You guys could pop over to New Farm Market, come back, pick me up, drop off the medicine that those guys want, and then we can head on west after we've done whatever tailing needs to be done, you know? And then right as you go, you know, you hear the tap of chalk against chalkboard and kind of turns back and goes, point, yeah! And then taps the chalkboard 2.6 times! <laughs> 2.6 times. Uh, yeah, okay. But we only need to do it once, so... Yeah, um, I mean, logistic, yeah, well, J James' math, I feel like, is a little more practical here. Um. <laughs> anyway, um, that's my one mental. Oh, no, I have three mental. I'm not a dummy. I'm well, Kennedy one. shrugs, and he goes, well, I'm pretty obvious. Uh, yeah, I, uh kind of look down at my arms with big red tattoos and yeah, no, I think I would uh, stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, uh, is there anybody else that has like a good sneaking skill? I don't have a good sneaking skill, but I do have warbles. <laughs> you do have a bird. Oh. I was gonna say, I, I'm i not exactly the most stealthy, considering I can't see where I'm going, but I can I have, follow at a distance. I have two grace. Why don't me and Crowquill stay back while you guys do the medicine run? Kill this guy. If you wanted additional help, uh, Tiana's like, you've run with Tiana for a while. You're used to like specifically working together. And Rooker and Bilgy, like the entire reason they're able to have a profitable career working in these seas is because they're able to stay inconspicuous. Oh, that's right, yeah. But I feel like Rooker would be a little bit more useful than Bilgy. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. Which one was the dog one again? Bilgy. 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 Bilgy, eh? I mean, you don't have to be a dog when things get rough. I mean, turn into a bird. He's a, he's a shape shape. Bilgy comes and sit down as you're sits back down as he's you're saying that he's got a big bra and goes, I like being a pupper. <laughs> well, I mean, so I sure I I suppose I just wish Anyway, Bill G, 
um, it could, if, if you want to stick back with me, I think maybe that would even be better. Um, do you have to lick people? I've seen you do it once or twice, and it's, I don't know, feels uncomfy. It, it keeps people hesitant, you know? Little investment for a bigger payoff further down. It's, uh, it's uh, weird. Uh, it's weird being a person and having people pet you. That's the one that's weird for me. That one also makes me uncomfortable, I, I must admit. Um, uh, I, it's, it's, just, it's not a great situation all around. Um, anyway, me and Bill. You know, that's why, that's why you go for like a, a year and a half or so, you know, like that sort of testy age where I have plausible reason to be okay, but also plausible reason to bite you in the hand but not get beat, you know. Mm. Mm. Never really thought about it before, but... Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's a delicate balance. So sorry, Jane, you were saying. I was saying, try to plan tomorrow. If you guys head out, um, how many people? How many people would we need to run the ship? That's what I'm saying. Uh, four. Four. And it can be any of you, all of your competent sailors. Okay. I I would say I'm basically useless at that. Well, like I'm not useless. I do my own contribution to the ship, but like uh, you are the best exclusively fourth sailor you could pick. I would say that's the way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Like I could I could be useful on either either one. So Jane's inconspicuous. Sun is going on the pickups. Yeah, sun's going mm -hmm. on the pickup. I'm thinking either Bilgy and Croquil, or one or the other. Just stay with me. I'd be fine with that. I'd prefer to stay in White Abbey a little bit longer. I have nostalgia here. Okay. I'll say I'll say we do Croquil and Jane as a duo, and everyone else is going on the pickup. Sure, let's do that. All right, you guys discuss. They, you know, pick who wants to be where for whatever reason. No matter what, usually Ken and Ye is like explosives first, wife second, explosives plus wife zeroth. Um, and Bill G and Rook are both kind of want to go back to New Farm Market where they don't need to shapeshift. Yeah. So everybody kind of is more or less willing to head off. Okay. You guys take some time. Uh, Bill G and Rooker want to stretch their legs a bit more, so they head off into the city to confirm. Uh, which jobs are you picking? Um, just the new farm market one, I think. Okay. Uh, unless we could also do the red wine keep one, or would that be too far out of the way? It's the difference between you would get back halfway through the day with the new farm market run, and you would get back at nightfall with the red wine run. But you could basically go bing, bong, bing, and kind of... Like two for one it. Do yeah, let's two for one it, I think. And then we have the whole day to do uh tailing and stuff. Alright. So I'm gonna more or less hand wave a lot of that. Uh you guys are competent sailors and the rest of the day is gonna go as it goes. I'm just gonna briefly glimmer back to have you guys make your way through and have time pass. But we're gonna focus more on the tailing. Is there okay. anything else you guys would do by now with, like, you know, discussing your options and having dinner and all that stuff? It's already nightfall. Anything else you're doing through the rest of the night? I'm having a few drinks, and I feel like I bring something up to Count and Ye. Hmm? Uh, so Count and Ye, I've been thinking. Have you ever considered maybe, you know, the, the concept? Love the concept. The whole, the whole apparatus, you know, it's, it's great. You fire cannonballs real fast. Does it gotta be steam? Well, at the moment I've been thinking about that. It's about the most I've been able to get is eighty percent. The old coal model just only got it a certain way far, but you know, design wise it become over reliant. I'm trying to find another option, but you know, crystals will be getting more expensive. I think they're gonna be going bust soon. I'm thinking you know, back in the, the syndicates. Hmm? They had those, 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 the, the big, the big mechs, the dwarf, dwarf mechs. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the retrofits. 
I bet you if we could get our hands on one of those. I wonder if we uh, could take it apart, isolate the power, run off that. Well, the way they used to build those was more of like a cold thing. So, I mean, it would mean more work on your end. I can make it work, but you're going to have to do a lot of shoveling. No, 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 no. You're thinking, we're thinking inverted. I'm thinking to get the apparatus as small as you want it. Okay, you think it's a matter of amplitude, not a matter of, uh... No, 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 no. here's what I'm saying. You got a power supply problem. You got this steam, you got to shovel steam into the, into the apparatus, you got this big old boiler. Scaling that down, it's going to be a problem. Why don't, why don't we use the same thing they used to power those bags? The crystals? Are you kidding me? Have you seen the market? If you've been watching the market, you've got to be watching the crystals market. No, no, no. I, I, no, hear me out, hear me out. If we can get just one of those crystals, just one, we don't need all that power. No, but that's what I'm saying. Have you seen the market? They're going crazy. I don't think we're going to be able to rely on that. You know, I heard they had a shortage up north, and they just didn't fix it. The prices have just been skyrocketing, and then they started getting bad in mid-run, and now they're getting bad here. But we could find a way to recharge those crystals. Oh, look at Mr. Utopia, recharge the crystals. Come on, they didn't even oh, figure out how to do that before the apocalypse. Look, I'm just saying, if we could, I think it's worth looking into. How much is it for one of these crystals? Ooh. It's one of those really specific things where it's by the pound and they're literal like crystals that came out of the ground. So it's like they're all individually priced. But prices have been going up bit by bit. The kind of thing where no one else would know, but basically like Sun and Ken and Ye who are fighting over it. But it's one of those things where people don't know where the dwarf, like the dwarves before the apocalypse got the crystals. They just know that there's a lot of them and they've been picking them out of ruins and salvaging, salvaging them out of the robots, but people don't actually know how to make them or recharge them. Does somebody want to give me a relevant roll of some sort? Um, I all could roll ritual or elemental. I could roll politics or some sort of physical skill. Um, yeah. It, it, what is this skill relevant to? This conversation? Yeah. Okay. Um, the thing I'm thinking, munitions, that's all about getting energy from point A to point B. I feel like that's how I'm approaching this crystal problem. Okay, why don't we go one by one then? All, all right. right. <laughs> Who wants to roll first? <laughs> Crowquill? Uh Am I rolling elemental or ritual? Which is more applicable, Will? Uh, both. This one's big both energy. Okay. I'll like it's a big it's a big pick, but both are as fruitful. I'll go ritual because I'm better at it. Okay. Uh so that uh that is a seventeen. Seventeen for ritual. Uh you know that the crystals, even though they give off a magical energy, it's actually due to the structure they're built out of, and it's not how the energy comes from. No sort of magic's been able to pump it up, and no magic sustains it. This is some sort of physical phenomenon, and magic doesn't really do anything at all. Okay. Who's next? I will. Politics. Nine for politics. Nine. So... There is a massive shortage locally, but internationally the shortage isn't actually too bad. It's present. But the big problem is that a lot of the crystals come from the like old dwarfborn ruins in like Venkrum in the far north, where we ran a whole bunch of adventures in the old campaign. And there's a bit of political beef between them and especially like Craghold Land, where a lot of the other ruins are, where like the dwarfborn are now, who view it as a big like, oh yeah, the heritage, the machines kind of thing. So it's like, it's a war in the Middle East thing where it's just, with the role of, you said nine? Yeah, nine. <laughs> yeah, with a nine, it's basically that. You know that it's like, there's, there's history, and it's more complicated than you know, and it's about the crystals, but it's not going to be easily solved. 
but that's also why you hire you. So you know that you can make hella money by getting those crystals over the border, but. Sorry, did someone say oil? I, <laughs> I seem to have heard this something about oil. And who's the last roll? Munitions, right? On 12. Yes, I got a 15. Mental 15. Unit. So the thing is, there were a lot of salvaged machines that came out of the Syndicate Mountains, not because there was a lot of old ones to build out of, but because a lot of the old ruins were really easily salvaged by, like, miners and engineers who had just been working on, like, cold shafts and digging machines for a really long time. And so a lot of it's actual retrofits. So a lot of the more progressive, like, alternative energy stuff, people talking about coal and steam machines, comes out of the Syndicates. The old stuff that comes from finding old dwarven crystals and power ports and stuff like that, that's all like coming out of this continent. Like it's all old school stuff from the apocalypse kind of thing. Mm. Well, all of these things, however, are really good for running a fucking cannon. That is the one thing you know right <laughs> off the bat. Well, I was just thinking, we don't, I think the big problem with everyone's trying to fill these things back up to full capacity. We don't need that. We need just a small fraction of what this thing can put out just to run the apparatus. I mean, I don't disagree with you. That's exactly the right thing. My disagreement is about like the 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 crystals versus the the alternative thing, you know? Because well, like uh, long term, because if we want to increment, we want to. I don't want to do backtracking on the mechanics, you know? Yeah, uh, that's fair. I'm just saying. Right now, our prototype is ship sized and just barely. I mean. Most of the forward hull is just the apparatus at this point. If you're trying to shrink it, we're going to have to start thinking, thinking outside, outside the uh, the hull, so to speak. You guys kind of blossom into another big spark of argument as the night goes on. You have a few more drinks, and then eventually dawn comes. You're sailors. You're used to waking up bright and early, so you've got a few hours that you have to yourselves before you can go and meet. Uh, Lord Ferdinand over at the church. Well, you can always just pal around for a little bit. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know. like how much longer? Like, we're seeing these guys off, right? Because they're yeah. they're like heading out, so. It's like you have that, and then one metric unit of farting around before you head into the thing. Weapon I mean, shop? well, I'm... <laughs> a weapon shop, you say? I'll, uh, well, if we're just farting around, I'll... Uh-huh, you can't see, actually. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know about you, I'm... <sighs> Selling all of those impact rounds has really made really made Sun excited to try a much improved version of it. So he's he's throwing himself right back into making some more. All right, so you're you're midway through sketching things out and doing calculations, and then you're jostled, not even noticing your companions getting off the boat as you have to head up there and start manning the sails begrudgingly as you sail off. Uh. The rest of you. You know that you're on, like, city people time, so you have a luxurious long breakfast. You leaf through a book a little bit. You lean back in the hammock for an extra five minutes before you wake up, period. The whole deal. And then you're already out on the streets a little later as everyone else sails off. Well, and you guys head towards the church. The city of White Abbey is named because it's, like, it's all centered around this massive abbey made out of like big polished white limestone and marble and this is basically where everyone congregates right about now this day once a week to come in for service it's a whole thing about oh we accept all comers but it's a very large church and a voice can only project so far but so there's almost a certain discrimination as to who gets there early and when so are you guys getting there real early, or are you slipping in late? Slipping in late. Yeah. I think it would be better for to remain inconspicuous um, 
and for Jane to find the person so I could sort of have Warbles hone in on that person. <laughs> All right. So you guys wait a little while. Uh, you blend in really well because, you know, like you're ruffians and sailors and you get in with everyone else who just doesn't have a lot of time in the day and is rushing to get here anyways to maintain social obligations at the bare minimum and religious ones. You shuffle in and there's not a lot of room. Um, you're actually close to the back and as the service is starting, like, not as it's starting, starting, but as people are, you know, like, warming up the organs and getting up on stage and setting things up for the pageantry of the morning, uh, the door nearby clatters open. You're in a convenient position near the back where this group doesn't see you, but there's, sure enough, Lord, or the Duke Ferdinand and then his whole retinue that comes with him, a good, you count six people, all dressed very similarly, very clean cut, same kind of style, same aesthetic. They all walk to the front, and you can see that there's a bunch of, like, sort of poorer, like, younger folk, maybe like 20-somethings, who, like, see them coming and relinquish seats in the front row, take a few silver quietly in the hand, and then head away from the church. And you see them all sit down right in the front. Nice. Way to be. Way to be. Uh, meanwhile, let's pull up that map to see how time goes. We don't need a map this session. It's <laughs> you know? Best laid plans, something, something. All right, so we're heading down. Our goal being going around that coast and into there. You're basically just going one square directly south. Yeah. The yeah. wind is the wind is against you, so you kind of have to make sure you're exactly there, and you correct your course a few times, but just barely behind a few of the other ships in port, you make it to New Farm Market early in the morning. It's easy enough to dark to dock here. It's not like White Abbey, which was a proper city, or West Watch, which was the same. New Farm Market is just a village, largely a trading post. You get down and start to wander around. There's not a lot of guards. Uh, there's not a lot of legal trade here. It's mostly stuff that isn't supposed to be going over the border that you can pick up here. You've got a contact who should be sort of in the middle of town at the apothecary. <laughs> this is on you, son. We're not there. Yeah, you, you're not. I forgot you're not there. Uh... Well, <laughs> Sun just actually I, 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 stands there awkwardly for a little while and then goes, oh, right. <laughs> well, here, I'm looking around like, so, uh, mine? Okay, I guess, I guess I'll go. Um, I, the Sun is very rarely allowed to take it's care like, of it. It's like thing. being the friend who never actually does the physical ordering of the, of the pizza and finally it's on you yeah. and you go, oh, um, what's the website? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, uh, okay, um, uh, walk down the gangplank, uh, hmm. looking around, uh, the contractor is supposed to be at the, uh, the apothecary. So you're wandering around really awkwardly, like, it's, it's anyone but you who usually does this, you take every excuse to go below and keep working on your designs, so you're shuffling past, uh, even just across the bay, you get to an area that is sort of like, it's desert, mostly naturally, a little bit magically, so it's pretty hot here. There's a lot of sand going by. Things are open air. There's a lot of tents, a lot of, like, windiness. It's pretty pleasant. You move down into the middle of the village. It doesn't take too long. It's not like the winding streets of the city. And you see Shabazz's apothecary. Hmm, that, uh, must be it. I go on and open the door and walk in. You walk in. Creaks behind you, closes. There's someone who kind of like just a minute about like maybe five seconds after you've come in leaves behind you and then it's just you and the apothecary goes, oh, I feel like I know you. What can I get you? Uh, hmm. Uh, well, uh, ooh, uh, how would Jane do this? Uh, 
Is there anything that... Hmm. Delivering I, for across the bay? Uh, yeah. I didn't say anything. And I, and I wink. <laughs> yes. Wink. They probably wanted you... Did they leave you a note? They probably wanted two pounds of earth root. Uh, two pounds of earth root. Yeah. Earth root. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm doing the thing with my voice right. Earth root, right. Is that actually the one that we want? Like, I'm sure they would have told us what it was. Don't worry, I'm giving a big wink. So, that's a good question. I feel like if Jane or Crocodile was here, you guys would go, no, that's the one. Like, it is in fact the herb, but what does Sun think? Ooh. Sun is thinking that if he says earth root, right. If it actually is earth root, it'll be like, well, it's illegal, so you can't have it. And if it isn't, it'll be like, right, that's the cover. He's he's smiling and nodding best he can, and whatever he gets, he's gonna bring it back and then ask someone who knows what they're doing. Gets back two pounds of oregano and <laughs> brings it back. <laughs> exactly. Rooker's, Rooker's just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> uh, don't, don't, it's the good stuff. Don't worry. I uh, made sure of that. So you're kind of awkwardly sitting there, and the guy goes, "Hey, just to be clear, you're Bilgy's buddy, right?" Oh, Bilgy, yeah, the one who's, yeah, no Bilgy, no Bilgy. Are you? And he, he beckons you to come closer so nobody overhears, just yeah, in case they come in last minute. Okay, so the thing is, Earthrue is legal here, perfectly legal, same as it is everywhere else, but you can't get it in the Three Kingdoms, and so it's most people are buying that if it's a pain thing because they are unable to get the medication, and usually people... So, it, it, do you have a piece of... Did they write it down? I guarantee it's two pounds, but... Oh, uh, yeah, no, two, two pounds. I know pounds. Pounds? Whew. I got, I got pounds squared away in my, in my head here. I know, I know my weights and my measurements, but uh, just... Well, See, I was just, the that most of our cargo was like, you know, illegal. So it's all right. I just, it's going to be two gold for the two pounds. If if there's a problem, just tell Bill G that I'm more than happy to fix mistakes. All righty, I give him two gold. That he, passes, I have. he passes you a small box. You can feel based on the heft and the way it rattles that it's like a brick of compressed herbs of some sort inside of it. Probably about two pounds. Mm. Yeah, no, that, that, that feels about two pounds. So, easy uh, in, easy out, you're back on the ship. Well, I got earth fruit. I hope that was what I was supposed to get. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, back in White Abbey, You've listened to a long, droning sermon with words that make you really, really suspicious for reasons you can't place, as usual, and people start to shuffle out. You can see that the people at the front row are kind of talking at the front. The back, there's like a cluster of people loudly chattering, sort of in the vestibule and kind of out front and in the middle, and everyone else is kind of awkwardly trying to file past them to escape. I'm going to, like, pretend to try to awkwardly file past, you know, where you're, like, mm -hmm. get off, and you're, like, standing there waiting as if, like, waiting for people to go by, mm -hmm. and, like, I'm looking for, like, an area to get in, but like, I'm not actually going anywhere. <laughs> have you heard, so apparently in large crowds, like, you know, like, downtown Toronto, like, Matt, like New York, like Times Square size crowds, like, like people follow fluid dynamics to a certain degree. Yeah. Like it's that sort of thing. Like you're, you can vaguely pretend to be moving around, but really you're just roiling around the you're cloud in the in entryway. Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> you just are the Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on that guy that we're trailing, though. I was going to say, Crowquill is one of the first people out. Uh, she moves sort of off to the side towards an alley um, and tells Warble to keep an eye out for that person, which, assumably, she sent, spent basically the entire sermon 
going, no, no, not that one, the shiny one. The <laughs> shiny right. one. Now, apparently crows are actually really good at distinguishing human faces. I believe mm -hmm. that. Then again, no, he's crow... looking at his back, so it wouldn't have been as useful. But... <laughs> A crow was a really good, like, bullshit fantasy pet choice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, obscenely clever things that are also, like, you can make a crow very emotively, like, slapsticky. <laughs> so you settle in, you, you try to listen, and you get a lot of time spent listening to people's passing conversations, but nothing that you're able to use. Some of it you mull over, you think over, and then discard. After a little while, after most people are gone, you can... So first, Crowquill, you can hear there's a few crates coming, and you you can feel not only through, like, the shuffling on your shoulder, but also through a bit of, like, Grove magic that there's a lot of shiny things coming. Warbles is kind of excited. Jane, you follow this crowd as they leave. You're keeping a good distance away because you can tell by the bearing that the people around this guy are bodyguards slash entourage, a bit of both. So mm -hmm. you don't want to be too obvious. You're on the far side of the vestibule when they pass through. You're a few meters behind and then you catch up with Crowquill and you can see them getting into a carriage. In a city like this, a carriage doesn't get you anywhere fast. You're still at walking pace with everyone else. It just gets you about like, a foot and a half higher and, like, a thin wall away from the peasants, basically. It's the social yeah. distance way to travel. It, yeah. Just not, you don't, so you don't have to walk with everybody else. Yeah. So yeah. You, you see this guy go in, and three, three of his entourage follow. The rest of them disperse. Okay. And before too long, this thing starts to go uptown. I follow it. I was gonna say, can can we do like the the arm lock guide me while Warbles is in the air? Because mm -hmm. I'll just have Warbles follow from above. All right. So meanwhile, uh, if we open up the map again, you've picked up this stuff, you've put it onto the boat, and now you've got to head over to Redwine Keep. The wind is, it's going pretty much straight westerly. It's more or less in your favor. And you make some pretty solid headway, uh, about two squares worth through open water towards the isles. You can't so see like them there or like one south. Or like there. No. If we were going like that. <laughs> that would be two squares worth south southwest. Sure. Works. It's oh. good. So you spend sort of the early morning through the late morning sailing more or less with the wind. Your sails are unfurled kind of at a reasonably open angle. There's a lot of ships moving to and fro. Uh, a lot of merchant ships are blending in with the crowd. It's decently good. You're moving past a couple of the more outlying isles before you know that you should be seeing the keep sort of in the middle of everything protected by a couple of the forts across the bay. Back in town, you guys follow this carriage a little ways and you reach an office, the entourage goes inside, you kill a bit of time, and then an hour later they all leave again. From there, since it's like very distinctively, you hear the bells go off, it's noon, they all file towards what looks like a pretty good restaurant, a nice cookhouse here in town. Okay. A cookhouse, you say? So? Hmm. Do we go in? Do we stay out here? What do you think? Yeah, I... I'm wondering, maybe, maybe we can get a seat next to them. 
Hmm. Warbles would draw too much attention in there. Yeah. All right. Um, in that case, I'm going to spend like a little bit, give Warbles, Warbles a little bit of seed, and then just say, mm -hmm. wait for me on the roof. Uh, you, you do that, and Warbles is kind of really enthusiastic. You, you get not through the ritual, but through like your druid magic. You get a distinct feeling of like perch, perch, good perch, good place. <laughs> like, yep, the, good perch. You know that if you hide nearby and you have someone to cover your back, Warbles is able to get into a good spot. Like a good spot to listen in, or a good spot? Oh. Oh, oh, okay. That's, yeah, we could do that. Sure, try that. All right. You guys keep a good ways away. Like, this is still a high-class joint. Like, if any place is going to have, like, nobility restaurants and commoner restaurants, it's going to be White Abbey. It's very stark here. You guys are off on the side in an alley where you won't be bothered, you know, like where the cooks come out to smoke probably in a few hours. And... Warbles flutters up. Uh, which of your skills are you going to use to try and hone in here? Um, I want to specifically hear everything, so I'm going to say it's a ritual on him. To uh, I'll say that I would kind of argue that it's Druid if you want it to be that, like, intimate. Okay. It, it really doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. it's all the same role, so... <laughs> it's numerically identical, but flavor-wise Flavor, stark, yeah. I'd say. I, like, it's one of those things where I don't want him interpreting words. I want to be able to hear everything, mm -hmm. and I'm basically acting as a telephone to Jane, yeah. just saying everything I'm hearing. Um, so that's going to be... Oh, are you doing that thing where you say it in their voice? <laughs> um, no, it's my voice. Okay. Damn, that creepy. Uh, twenty. Okay. So you, this is something that most other mages actually. It's one of those paradoxical things. Like most other mages would have a really hard time, but because you can't see, it's kind of the hardest part that you're already past. Uh, you let your senses go. You integrate with the birds. You, you stop feeling, you feel a bit uneasy, and Jane, you feel Croak will like, lurch against you and lose a sense of gravity. You're not in control of where and how your senses are placed, but you're with Warbles as Warbles goes up into the rafters. Things are still a little bit warped. You get a bit of bird sense at the same time, so you don't necessarily think, ah, yes, the, like... You know, like the little bunky window seems to be open. The second one down, you think, ooh, hole go in kind of thing. You flutter, there's a path, there's darkness where people won't see you, a lot of noise where people won't hear you flutter, and then you perch. There's a bit of confusion, and then there's that bit of connection where there's a shiny. You intellectually kind of go, that's the crown, that's who you're going for. You direct a little, and Warbles gets in position. You here underneath that there's a conversation uh you see that this guy ferdinand's with kind of just the entourage no one else someone else similarly dressed to the entourage has clearly met them they're now up to five and you start to kind of quietly mumble along the conversation oh yes that's late at night um i tried to go for tea but i unfortunately i could only get dinner but i believe that should be a profitable endeavor at least you know, it's important that we know the sort of thing that people are saying in our kingdoms and know who we are. There's moments of agreement. The conversation goes ping pong back and forth to other things, then comes back to the topic at hand. And Oh, yes, yes. I know dinner meetings are cliche for this sort of thing, but hopefully we should be able to get somewhere quiet where we can be honest about our intentions. <gasps> After all, I don't want that... Oh, you know that... Yes, the, no, I know, not here, not here. Anyways, and then the conversation kind of goes other places. You listen in for a few minutes, but it comes clear that whatever topic has faded away. Nice. Okay. 
I'm gonna hop to another perch. Hop to another perch. Fly up. <laughs> All right. Right as Warbles kind of starts flying out, you get the indication of, okay, you don't need to be listening anymore. There's no other information. And you at first, you kind of, you feel the tug of Jane's arm. You feel which way is down. Your extremities are back. You start to get hearing, but the sight doesn't come. And there you are. Warbles flutters down onto your shoulder, not having really been super conscious of what just happened. I gave him some more seed. Horrible seems to be happy. Today's just all seed. Just seed for days. <laughs> Easy jobs. Uh, out in the middle of the ocean, now it's getting close to about midday. You're midway to Red Blind Keep, and now the wind is right at your back. Ooh. You get sort of the later half of noon into the port. And at this point, normally you'd be worried, like this would be the sabotaging of your day, but because of the port pass, you're able to quickly dock, and instead of having the normal invasive West March procedures, you just flash it. And the people who subject you to the search are almost more than happy to let you go. They don't want to have to deal with that anymore. They just want to get on to the next ship. You're able to get in. Uh, this isn't someone you know. So you can either try and follow the rumor, or Tiana can go ahead and you can work on something in the meanwhile while the transaction's underway. Uh, I mean, as much as I uh, sort of love going outside the comfort zone and trying new things, I was pretty shit at a subterfuge. And honestly, it's probably just safer and easiest if I, uh, if I go tinker. Let Tiana go do it. Yeah, Tiana, you should probably... Uh, Probably take the box. Yeah, no worries. I know the guy. Tiana, Tiana leaves. Uh, what are you working on? More impact slugs. All right, give me some rolls. Ah! <laughs> oh, I rolled five dice there. So that's yeah, <laughs> that's a bad roll. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, let's see, that's ten plus six plus four. That's a twenty. Ah. All right, so you, you're getting right underway. This is not the sort of thing where you're trying to make sure the first prototypes are good. This is more like the first prototypes work and you're trying to make them better. Here, mm -hmm. you're not making any direct design tweaks. It's just improving on the previous ones in terms of methodology. The grooves are perfect. They're consistent. All the slugs before being put together are in the same correct slots. You haven't made the sort of plus signs you put on the front to try and disperse the load and avoid uh, like dispersing the impact too much. Mm -hmm. But you haven't filed them in yet. You think all the actual clumps of metal are the right height, the right cylindrical size, and that's about as far as you get. Tiana comes back on the boat, loads in a barrel. You presume more swamp grass. Luckily, you don't smell it right away, which is Sign that at least the job is being done right somewhat. And you're good to go. Oh, man, I should wish Jane were here, I say, as I'm trying to figure out where to put this barrel. She always finds the best places. Uh, Tiana's good at it, I think. Tiana's good at it, but uh, I don't know. It makes me nervous when I come down and I see it, you know? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. We got a port pass. Uh, yeah, uh, I hastily cover it with, like, a spare bit of canvas. <laughs> you put it down, and then it's one of those, like, immediate failure things where you put down a barrel, cover it with canvas, walk back to the musician's room about to get back to work, and you turn around, and you see, very obviously, in the middle of the room, a lone barrel covered in a canvas. <laughs> Ooh, and there's kind of like a there's an opera. Ah, like, oh, shit! And Tiana's like, no, just like last time, you guys settled. You shove it. Basically, the last time you had to do this, you put it with the rest of the rations. So you just do that again. <laughs> Swamp grass. So in the middle of the room, cover it in like a tarp. You're like, yeah. glowing like it's a quest objective. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we need to do it. Now it's hidden. Can't see it. Can't see it. Hidden. Hidden. 
glaringly obvious, like a camo that's just the wrong color for the environment. <laughs> yeah. So you guys follow them as they leave the dinner. They head back to the office for, uh, again, about an hour. And then you can see them heading uptown, presumably for some other kind of meeting. Cool. I guess we follow them. Yeah. At this point, they're far away from the church and they're kind of already in the merchant district, getting closer to the noble side of town. And they don't go into the carriage proper. Everyone here is pretty well dressed. So you guys are starting to stick out a little more. Uh, but they're also more obvious and kind of easier to get close to and over here. Okay. What's your approach going to be on tailing them here? Um, this entire time, Crowquill has been sort of like covering her face and stuff like that and trying to pretend to be an old lady, which is why she is on Jane, basically, basically mm -hmm. being guided by Jane, just pretending yeah, to be I, very frail. I think keep her distance and just look like maybe I'm taking, I'm taking my granny out for a walk sort of vibe, you know? <laughs> And man, Granny loves it when I carry my big crossbow with me. She feels very protected. Yeah. So you guys are you're keeping it really you're conservative, you're keeping distance, so you don't get a lot of information, but you're completely innocuous as you get closer. You actually as it happens, see them for a moment probably go okay, I don't think anyone's following us, and then keep going as you're literally following them. Okay. You, you go a little ways, they go into a tea house, you fo and you start listening along to this meeting, but it's nothing. It's like the local chamber of commerce talking about steel prices. You just glaze over real quickly, there's nothing going on, and very quickly they're back on the road again. By now it's getting closer to the early afternoon. And you're leaving Red Wine Keep, uh, Sun, and the rest of the gang. The wind right. is moving sort of like southwesterly, so it's actually against you right now. Mm. You make it only about one square's worth of distance. Uh, I'd say that you probably want to go towards the village side of that island ahead of you. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Well, the wind, the wind hasn't shifted, and it was with you on the way in, and so now it's directly against you on the way out. You have to tack to and fro, but hooking around the island has been helpful. So, uh... What do you usually say when you're there to pick up in a, a box of illegal goods, or semi-legal, and you don't necessarily know the person? Uh, I don't think you do it if you don't know the person. Hmm. I think that's how you get shot. You know? Okay, but, no, no, no. Very specific example. When I went in there, I didn't know. I didn't know how to start the conversation. You know, do you say, "Oh, hey, do you have that illegal box?" Or do you say, "Hey, do you have a legal box?" Hey, do you have a box? Sometimes I forget. Tiana just kind of shrugs and goes, "I just say I'm here for the thing," and usually people nod, and then it just happens. Hmm. Yeah, that is a lot simpler. That being said, sometimes you have to go, "Oh, not that thing," a different thing. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a bit of a uh, bit of a science to it. You know, one time I got this big bubbly thing, like an assembly of some sort, an alchemy thing. The guy looked like he's seen a ghost when I said, "Not that thing." I wonder what happened to that. Uh, well, what it, did it smell more of like a sort of a sulfury smell, or more of like a like a sweet smell? Like. Like freshly, freshly ground and polished iron. Nothing was coming out of it. It was just in a, you know, like a chemical thingy. Oh, like a like a, there was no chemicals in there. No, like they were in there, but it wasn't leaking or anything. It was just 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. That's that's your job. Yeah. No. It sounds sounds like he probably exploded um, at some point. Sort of base. You know, generally when you're storing alchemical stuff, it shouldn't be bubbling like actively. Um, scary. Tiana just kind of shrugs, oblivious to any of the danger involved in that conversation. In town, you guys follow for some errands, and then you get to, like, really close to the walls of the keep, like, a very fine class dining establishment. There's no way, no matter how well you hide, that you're going to be able to get through the front doors here. Hmm. Gotta observe from afar. Maybe we can get your bird to uh, do some hanging out. Uh, are there any decent spots around for warbles to hang around at? You don't get the same feeling as before. You ask for a few descriptions uh, from Jane, and you get that it's like a building with two floors and like kind of like upper lofty spots, but all the windows seem to be closed. Uh, wouldn't really be able to get inside the same way. Closed windows, no perch. Warbles departs a little ways and then comes back and starts leading you down an alley. I follow Warbles. I trust I follow. Warbles. Man, good call, I guess. You get a little ways, and you get to sort of just like a back, like, you know, like an alley, like a loading dock. There's some crates around here that are like empty ones that have since been emptied of their contents and set aside for whenever they can be dropped off when the next delivery comes. This door that's unattended. Well, it's not necessarily a crow door, but it's definitely a person door. Do we do we go in? Jane? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, you carefully Creak open the door. You hear the distinctive loud hum of a kitchen through what must be like closed walls, no open archways or anything. Here you're in the back end of a storeroom. There's kind of like, almost like an S shape, even though it's a big boxy room, the shelves have been made so you kind of go back and forth and then around into the kitchen proper. Things are still quiet here. I don't know, I mean, even if we were to get in, like, it would be so obvious, you know, it's... Unless you get to pretend to be wait staff. That, or a world-famous food critic. That would mostly be on your part. I I think I would be better off just being here. Yeah, no, my, my social is awful. I, I wouldn't be able to pull that off. Um, I don't so, know. Croakwill, you don't notice this because Warbles just, you know, periodically leaves and comes back to do some scouting. But Jane, you notice Croakwill kind of flutter up onto the rafters here for a little bit and flutter back down. This building's built in kind of a way where you could probably clamber on top of a shelf and then maybe kind of get close to a wall and listen through there if you wanted to be really sneaky. Okay, I'll try that. See how that goes. Croakwill? I'm not fucking climbing that. No fucking way. When it comes to being sneaky and having to worry about hand placements making noise, that is not the best thing for me. I, I'll, I'll do it. And I would do the same thing I did before with Warbles, but I don't have Jane there to support me, so mm-hmm. I, it's on Jane on this one. <laughs> All right, where are you heading instead? I am actually just going to stay by the door. Is there a way that I can use ritual to sort of hide my presence? Uh, yeah. Yeah, want to roll it? Okay. Uh, 
Well, that wasn't a good roll. Um, it's four. That is a 14. All right. Uh, Krokul slept rough a few times, right? Yeah. So you, you find a corner. You double check to make sure it's not too windy or anything. You get cozy as if you were, you know, like, trying to get an extra wink of sleep kind of thing. Nice and low below what you assume is people's sight line, and then you kind of invoke hoping the magic does the other half of things. You get there cozy for a little while. Jane, uh, roll either grace, brawn, or delicate. I'm going to roll delicate, because that's the best one. All right. <gasps> oh, not a bad roll. Oh, never mind. Pretty average roll. <laughs> You distracted me. <laughs> 16. All right, so you you wait, and there's the door closing as Crowquill leaves, and you're like, no one can tell me no. And you go on the most precarious looking of shelves, and very slowly you just go, quiet step, quiet step, quiet step. It creaks, you counterbalance. It does the kind of thing where you know you're good, but anyone else would be, like, having a panic attack watching you climb this rickety-ass shelf. Yeah. And then you just, you grab a sturdy rafter, and you're good. You just climb up. You're good. You start to crawl closer. You hear conversations. But now, like, you've been following this guy. You've heard a few conversations. Like, you, you recognize the voice. Through the wall, you can hear muffled conversation, bits and pieces. From what you can ascertain... The guest of the evening is still not here yet. Outside, uh, Crowquill Warble seems to be agitated again. There's something shiny. You can hear another carriage coming. As in more people? <laughs> yeah. Not like down the alley, but to the front of the restaurant. Hmm. Well, that's fun. I would continue. I will continue to keep my presence concealed and taking in information from Warbles. All right. Uh, so you you hear one of the cooks leaving. Your previous precautions click off. Like there's a rattling as like a raccoon walks past some trash. There's a mumbling as someone's distracted and then they leave the alley and you're unseen. Warbles wanders off. You don't get much information, but Warbles comes back as this person's gone inside and the carriage leaves. Indoors, uh, you're listening in and you hear like the croaking and grumbling of a guest arriving. You don't hear much details until people sit down and start talking. And then... Slowly but surely, the conversation starts picking up. There's something, and you hear, oh, it was Mrs. Mrs. Davies. You know the name, Mrs. Davies. Uh, and you hear a number of titles. Pick the first or the second. One of them's going to be muffled, the other one's clear. Second. Director of some kind of company and CEO of Populous Civil Solutions. Okay. Everybody, there's another groan as everyone sits down and people start talking. There's some petty discussion, something about taxes being levied. And then a distinctive other voice coming in and going, So, you're looking to employ us for a contract, is that correct? Oh, yeah. Right, yes, yes. And there's some muffling. You hear something and then... Yes, yes, that... that concern. Uh, we were wondering, in fact, um, we need to make sure that the connections between your organization... There's some muffling. It's, yes, obfuscated, obfuscated will be the right word. There's some more muffling. Yes. Well, of course, I would hope that no one knows that it used to be me, but people who used to go sniffing, most of them, um, they don't go sniffing anymore. We've made sure of that. 
So the permissions, the permissions one's still coming, but you know, we sent a message. And there's some more mumbling. The conversation fades and sort of like, right, well, anyways, we'd be happy to work with your service. Um, we have additional concerns, but some are more private. Do you know the, the Prosper Club? Perhaps an early drink? Yes, yes, that'd be lovely. There's some pleasant trees, the sounds of people standing, someone leaving, and then a little while later, everyone else goes. As you can tell that the people you're trying to follow have left, there's a couple of people who have started unloading boxes in the loading dock below you. Okay, well, I'm gonna get out of the rafters. <laughs> They're okay, just... into the storage room below her, or? Yep. Okay. Oh, oh. So what's guess... your exit strategy? I guess I'll wait. All right. Maybe. So you see there's like box, box, four boxes, like two stacked on each other. Both of them, like two people drop them off and then one person stays inside and goes, starts unloading them. The other person is coming and going with packs of two. You watch, it's almost like watching baseball. You're just watching the incremental tiny shifts. Like, okay. And, oh, almost. Oh, Crowquill, you're on the outside just listening to people unload boxes. And then there's a moment where all the boxes are gone. It's about midway through waiting for another one. And the other person unloading boxes goes to help unload. And you quickly just, hop, you're down and you just walk out. You're just timed well enough that they're both facing away and you're out of the restaurant. Perfect. Ooh. Where did he go next? The time that it took to get away, uh, you lost the tail, but you heard something about the Prosperous Club, or the Prospera Club. Okay. Pros Club of Prospera. That doesn't have uh, bad historical associations with it. No. no. Pros Prospera's <laughs> fun. Uh, it's ironic. It's ironic. Okay, anyway. Um, let's look around, I guess. I, I, I don't know if I want to be asking anybody about the Club of Prospera. I guess I could. I'm a white woman, but... So you wander around in sort of the upper class district, going place to place. You definitely have guards kind of eyeing you, but they're not too suspicious because you're in a big group and you're reasonably innocuous around here. After a little while, you see it. Sure enough, it's the Prosperous Club. It's, it's just the word, prosperous. You know, as in having prosperity. There's no association to Prospera. There's nothing to do with that. Not that there would any, be anything wrong with being a highly religious person, of course. But. Of course. And you see that this thing is like, it's a club, it's walled off. There's a good space with a bunch of hedges all around everything. There's gates. You see a few people well-dressed in front of the doors. Like, this place is heavily fortified. Okay. So probably... I mean, I'm going to look around the place and see if there's any back entrance or open windows or anything like that. So you're you're wandering around. Uh, what's Crowquill up to? Uh, Crowquill is going to sort of see what's around there. Is there some place where I could sit and not be suspicious or like stand around and not be suspicious uh somewhere this like ritzy you would need to either go out of your way to hide or have a really good alibi yeah hmm. i wouldn't be able to set up shop here without immediately being run out <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh, this is permit country. Yeah, I have a feeling that people aren't going to like me. 
Um, I'm just going to wander about. Um, sort of like up a street, down a street, over a street. Mm -hmm. And if anyone asks me, I went the wrong way. <laughs> I don't know where I am in the city right now. I don't even know that I'm in the ritzy area of town. <laughs> Excellent. So you're kind of just wandering, you're getting the color things, and uh, what was I going to say? Are you guys, we're getting close to the end, but do you guys want to run a little bit longer, or do you want to kind of close this in a little earlier? I'm fine with either or. Take us, take us to a cliffhanger, Will. Involve that life. See, you've set me up for a cliffhanger, but I, I cannot follow through on a cliffhanger. It wouldn't be a cliffhanger. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So you're all getting into position. Uh, meanwhile, why don't we go to back to the map for a bit, resolve a little bit more sailing, see what the timing is like. By now, you're getting into the late afternoon, closer to supper, closer to dinner, depending on your dialect. By now, the wind has shifted to a steady easterly, so it's not for you or against you. It's workable, distinctly workable. Hmm. Is Blazing Sun oh, a Thank supper you. or dinner kind of guy? Uh, uh let, me, let me see. Yeah, no, it's just about dinner time. Dinner. I feel like supper is both more pure and more cursed. Not in yeah. a contrasting way, but in a both kind of way. Supper. Uh, yeah, supper has like that S, that S, and then the P. It, it, I don't like the way it and exits my mouth, you know? It doesn't have like, a good I, word feel for you? I imagine being 12 and going to a friend's house, and if I get invited for dinner, I feel like that's like the default. Like, dinner is you're going to eat a meal, yeah, and then okay. supper, it's plus 50% chance there's going to be Jesus talk, and plus 10% chance the food is poisoned, you know? It could... Will, could you say it might be your last supper? It might indeed yeah, be the last. There's also a plus 50% chance that the supper is going to be, like, just fucking amazing. You know? Like, mm -hmm. like, if like it's, it's a, one of those, it's like a too wholesome family where it really can go either direction. Either, like, they're yeah, too wholesome, they have a secret, or they're too wholesome, I could learn something from this interaction. <laughs> they're too wholesome, we need to protect these people. <laughs> the thing is, I have a pretty, I have a pretty wholesome family. It's hard mm -hmm. to, like, wholesome me to the point where I feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I was at I was at a friend's house or not even a friend, but it was like a neighbor's house once they invited us over for a supper. And it was like stepping into a nineteen fifties commercial for orange juice. It was very frightening to see how immaculate the house was. Mm -hmm. How perfect the behave the kids were. But not in like a not in like a, oh, you're going to get hit if you misbehave. Just in like a genuine, like, oh, you know, I'm going to take the dishes. I'm going to wash the one. Okay. Like, it's it's not under threat. It's just the only available reality. Yeah. Timmy, can you do and the dishes? Like, sure, Pa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it's like, they're doing that. And they had zucchini muffins, which oh, is very fuck. frightening. Oh, um, fuck. Zucchini muffins are frightening. And then we all retired to the living room to play big game hunting on the Nintendo Wii. Um, a zucchini muffin is such a statement, because it's like going, what flavor do you pick? And going, health. <laughs> no flavor, just health. The problem with a zucchini muffin is it's not even the flavor, it's the texture. I like you zucchini know? muffins. <laughs> My adult... My adult palate really likes a zucchini muffin, but as a kid, there would oh, true. not have been anything more important. Zucchini muffin my, was a thing when I was a kid. No way. My mom made zucchini muffins a lot because if you have, if you try and make a garden, you plant zucchini, and that's mm -hmm. the only thing that grows. They have a lot of zucchini, so oh, she makes no. zucchini muffins. No. And when Rachel would bring zucchini muffins to school in her lunch, the whole class would gather around to watch her eat this horrifying new food concoction. And it be quickly became the highlight of the day, where Rachel would pull out her lunch kit, and everyone in the class would go, oh, now it's time for zucchini muffin! And they'd all gather around and watch her eat it. It's a lot of theatrics for a zucchini muffin. It is. 
I remember actually hearing that story. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, 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 I'm assuming that I'm assuming that Sun has spent this travel time uh, in the bottom working on slugs, and oh, that's not a great roll. Not loving yeah. it. You think you're about midway across the bay towards White Abbey, but you're not sure. About I, I would have no way of knowing. Like, uh, onto the next screen? Uh, like, the next time we travel, you'd get to the next one. We don't need to worry okay. about the map anymore, is what I'm okay. saying. Whoop. Alright, none of these pencils work. Give me a pencil. So, Jane and Croquil. Uh, so, Croquil, you're wandering around. You're just getting around the neighborhood, trying to see if you can get any other info, any like side angle or otherwise be present. Uh, Jane, what's your approach? After circling the building, you see that there is a side door, and you spotted something that Warbles didn't, which is another possible way in from the rafters ahead. You wouldn't have seen it from the front. You could only see it from behind. Um, is it, could a bird go into the rafters? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to try to find wherever the hell, uh, Croquil, Croquil went. I imagine I stand out. Uh, do you want to roll a d6? Who? Me? Uh, yeah, I'll say Chelsea. Okay, so you go up a street, you go down a side road, you go down the other road, you go back. You're at the start of the square. You go, ah, oh, shit, you go a different direction, you take a right turn, and then right as you're kind of going, ah, oh, shit, you see Croquil turn a corner and go, oh, Croquil, and then you catch up. All right, I'm going to point out the uh, rafters entrance. Maybe we can get your bird to... Uh... Go into there, maybe get some information, see what's going on. Morbles, does it look like a perch to you? Morbles seems enthusiastic. Perch the is. only thing is, Jane's going to need to cover for you somehow out here on the street. Mm. I just came out of the bar and I'm a little bit tipsy. <laughs> and you're trying to get me home. Good, good. Okay, sure. <laughs> and then We're going to be late for the grunge fashion show. We're going to be late for that fashion show. You have to hurry up. Come on, my, my, my dearest. <laughs> and then I just muttered something, something, something. Fuck the fashion world. Something, something, something. Sexist pig grabbed my ass. Something, something, something. Go Warbles. <laughs> so you, you kind of lurch from side to side, drunken... Drunken, you feel yourself being shaped, lurch, lurch, up, flap, you're in warbles as you sort of disconnect. You make your way up sort of through the rafters. It's open up here, there's lots of smells. This top section is quiet. You flutter down a bit and then you see the shiny, but you're too exposed so you flutter back up. This, the shiny sits down at a table and there's a few other people. But the time passes and someone else comes up. There's a conversation going on. You get sort of snippets for a little bit, just casual things, and then going, right, so you were saying about the... And then the guy leads in again, he goes, yes, yes, the... Um, so you said you are picking up uh, information about all of the citizens, correct? Yes, of course. It's the function of our of our company, right? And um, suppose someone wanted to acquire this information. Well, it would, and there's kind of a bluster. It would, it would be secure, of course, under the highest. And he lifts up a hand. The Lord goes, no, no. Suppose, suppose someone wanted that information. And there's a large pregnant pause and I 
must maintain the integrity of the work I've done, but I can make work with deliberate intent. There's another long pregnant pause, and then you hear, Hammond, Crowley, do you think you would make sure no one's peeking or anything? Uh, Johnson, if you could check the back alley just in case. I, I don't think it should, there should be too many people around here. People tend to... And there's some people who leave, and then it's just this guy, one of his cronies, and uh, the person who was in the other bar, Mrs. Davies. Uh, outside in the streets, even though the conversation's continuing and Crowquill's still under getting information, uh, you've heard that, and you see briefly in the window some people going down the stairwell, and... Some of them must be going around the inside of the restaurant, which they shouldn't find you, but someone is coming out here into the back alley. Is there a, um, a distance that you need to be in order to keep this connection going? Not a distance, more of a question of how you're managing to keep Crowquill moving. Carrying him. Like... Kind of just uh, on the shoulder, get him out of the alley, walk like a down. like a weekend at Bernie's kind of. Yeah, weekend at Bernie's, oh. like holding her, like a kind of like oh come on, we have to go, we have to we have to get to the fashion show, you know, <laughs> sort of fashion like, show because both well, of us are the height of fashion. <laughs> but I definitely want to be out of the alley, so I'm gonna like quickly get her out of the alley. And then once we're in the street, I'm going to be like, okay, we gotta, got to get going, you know, dragging her a little bit, but like, blustering while doing it, you know? Accidentally dropping so me. <laughs> not, just a little, not enough that you like, it hurts you or anything, but like, you know, you fall to your knees just a little bit. <laughs> so, Croquil, you're, you're in the rafters, you have no idea what's going on. Uh, but Jane, you're there, like, and you you hear the sound of someone going in the alley, and you can feel like the fucking burning laser beams of someone profiling the shit out of you. And for a brief moment, you're being assessed, and then yeah, whatever. They go back inside. <laughs> Up in the rafters, the conversation continues. Right. Well, the thing is, you know, we have. It's not correct to say in our day and age, but you know, there's elements that they're detrimental to the way that we want an ideal society to function, you know, and there's kind of a chuckle and of course, of course, you can't say anything like that nowadays. People will just be up in arms. And there's kind of some chuckles. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But really, I was particularly concerned about the well, you know, the dark magic is really a logical concern in the modern political climate with what it can do. And we can't have shapeshifters going around. Something tells me that, that we have to throw some sort of petty victory at that Franklin to get the heat down. We're going to have to take some losses, but I think... You know, we can probably make a move to make sure we know who is in this country, right? And there's almost like a scoff, like a, oh, oh, oh. of course, of course, of course. Wouldn't be the first time. It's important to make sure you know who's here. I'll make sure that I send a safe letter, not through the normal channels. But I really should be going. I don't want to be here too late. You know what people will say. Anyhow, and there's a groaning as the guest goes to leave. I, I, I guess I'm sort of hop, hopping out of there, just hopping along the rafters and eventually fluttering. You, in. you feel yourself flutter out the window when you don't need to be there and you kind of steady yourself. You do that and you put your hand against a wall and right as that happens, you kind of look from side to side to get your bearings. You see someone well-dressed kind of lock eyes with you, kind of just give like a 
and then walk into the walk back into the restaurant. I, I lean in and look. I was pretending you were super drunk. Why does my arm hurt? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, making a bit of an act with it. <laughs> a bit of an act called throwing me across the room. I don't. <laughs> People gotta believe it, you know. Okay. So you guys, you guys kind of argue, and you're sitting there, kind of feeling out, like, "Yep, that's that's gonna bruise. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna be a big bad yellow boy. Oh yeah." <laughs> and warbles, not that, not that arm. No, no, other arm, other arm. <laughs> so you you don't rely on the same information as everybody, you're listening more to like the auditory texture of a city. So you can hear, you know, how White Abbey's structured, you've left the rich part of town. Like a lot of where you're going is down the main streets. Like there isn't a big merchant quarters per se. Like it's more like, you know, you have these streets and then between them are the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And you've been walking along the docks for what seems like too long. Like you've been walking maybe back and forth a few times. Chain, you don't see the boat. Uh, so, son, do you want to roll me odds or evens? Sure, I'd love to. The wind didn't work perfect for you, so you came in a bit close to the wire. I was supposed to say which one I wanted before I rolled it, didn't I? <laughs> uh, hey guys, I got a four. I, I got garbled, garbled audio, so I don't know if you succeeded you or not. Four. Uh, I, I said evens, and I got a couple of them. I got a four. All right. So you've gone up and down, and you're trying to get a good angle to look out, and you get to the end of a pier, and sure enough, like, searching for a place to stop, you see the bilge water kind of sailing in. You wave them down, and you can see a few guards coming in. You can sort of give them the thumbs up, like, yeah, yeah, we know. The bilge water comes in nice and close to the edge of the city, and then, or sorry, to the edge of the pier. You get some ropes thrown over, you tie them down, and then the gang plan comes in. There's a good, like, five or six guards who are ready for, like, a frustrated, you dare come in at this hour search, and then you flip up the port pass, and almost angry that they don't get to manhandle you a little bit, they leave you alone. Ooh, uh, Jane, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't leave this, uh, this operation in our hands. Do we? Uh, we have to report back to uh, Frankenstein or whatever his name is, right? Franklin? Yeah, at some point. <laughs> Started with an F. The other one's Ferdinand. So. Both F sounds. Both F sounds. Frankenstein. That's pretty close. Yeah, Frankenstein and Ferdinand. Frankenstein and Franz Ferdinand. Like, but it totally wasn't Frankenstein. No, you're right. I, 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 I yeah, understand. Just, okay. So That's here we are. Everyone's back together. You've reached port for the night. Um, I'll resolve actually getting payment for those things probably next session since you yeah. guys kind of just came in together late, late, late at night, last minute. But that's our session. Uh, you can check us out at youtube.com slash Mr. Croden when this episode is posted. You can follow us at twitch.tv slash Mr. Croden if you want to see it while it's happening. Uh, and if you want to play this game yourself at home, uh, the latest functional rules version of the rule set is at twitch.tv slash Mr. Croden. We might do some things that aren't perfectly up to that because we're working on the like halfway through editing for the final version version of the rule set. But it should all be workable from there. Final version dot... Final yeah. dot actual final dot. I've final called six point. of them final. Yeah. It the word has become meaningless at this point. It's just yeah. like time for us. <laughs> it it's going to re it's going to reach a certain acceptable level of doneness to the point where I'm willing to do something else, and then there's going to be a rule set. I think what happens is Will will say, "Okay, this is done," and by that he means I have finalized this aspect of the mechanics. Yeah. You'll be yeah, like, and then, man. And there's going to be splat books, like the disease yeah. and, you know. It, like, it was definitely final, and it's definitely done. It's just, am I talking about the book or the phase? <laughs> you know, the internal phase. There's phases. Right. So you got to go through stages. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyways, I'm full of shit. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Yeah.